Hello and welcome to this uh, special CNBC Africa debate where we are talking about the regeneration of uh, the city of uh, Johannesburg. I like numbers. Numbers are a journalist's best friend. Let me share some of uh, them with you right at the outset of this conversation. I wanted to pose the question, did you know that 6% of uh, the households in Johannesburg, only 6% on their own dwellings, meaning 89% of all the households in Johannesburg do not own their dwellings. I was thinking about it and I was thinking, surely there's a huge opportunity here. It should be easy to be a politician. Well, let's find out if that is going to be the case. Let me introduce uh, my panelists so you can understand what I'm talking about in terms of uh, the scale of the problem uh, that we have here in the city of uh, Johannesburg. On my immediate left, I have uh, the executive mayor of uh, Johannesburg. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Hemin Mashaba for your time, sir. Thank you, thank you. Sir. Next to him, I have Wiswa Mchekwane. She's chief executive officer of the South African Institute of Black Property practitioners. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, Neil Gopal is chief executive of the South African Property Owners Association. They are the big boys. They are the big red pairs. They're the big uh, uh, owners within the South African context. Thank you for your presence here Thank today. You. And last but not least, uh, on the outset, I've got uh, Paul Jackson, his chief executive officer. Uh, and uh, Paul is a big player and a small player. And he's going to be talking a lot about the things that are big and the things that are small. He comes from the Trust Urban Housing Finance. Thank you for your time, Paul. Thank you, Godfrey. Mr. Mayor, we have to start with you. I think, for me, what's key is that you're able to tell us the extent of the challenge that you are dealing with. When you came into office, you stood up and you said, there is a problem here. Remind us again the scale of the problem. Well, I think, yes, uh, when I took over the administration, uh, as you're aware, I was elected on the 22nd of August. And uh, on the 1st of December, I had to give my 100 days of review of my administration. And in the process, amidst all, all the, the challenges, identified a huge opportunity, a low-hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit of a city that was hijacked, uh, derelict buildings, uh, uh, people living in unacceptable con uh, conditions, 300,000 housing backlog of people who can afford to pay. I then said, uh, this is a huge opportunity. But it's a huge opportunity that's going to require boldness, it's going to require uh, uh, new thinking. And uh, I then made a statement. Um, and, uh, to people of Johannesburg and South Africa that um, we are going to take back this inner city from the criminal elements and turn it into construction site to build affordable accommodation for our people, to build student accommodation, as you're aware, the city of Johannesburg, a massive student uh, population with no accommodation. Small business uh, the areas, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, small uh, the entrepreneurs uh, and professionals, mm. unfortunately, are out, uh, uh, priced out of uh, the rose banks and the sentence of this world. Today, you, you, you want to start a practice as an engineer or lawyer. To start in Senten uh, with the type of rentals that they charge, it's almost impossible. Mm. So I said, here's yeah, an opportunity. But unfortunately, it's going to require some kind of boldness. Mm. And I declared war oh, against uh, criminal elements and started sending a note out there that they've got to leave the city because I need it for our people. To what extent have you been able to realize the vision that you set out when you set out two years ago? Look, I think uh, this is a project of a long haul. Uh, you, you know, you are operating in an environment that is highly regulated, unlike obviously used to selling shampoos for many years. I can make a, <laughs> I, I can make a decision uh, uh, in, in the passing, uh, you know, uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in a highly regulated environment like this. I had to first obviously put together my plan. Yeah. 
sell it to, uh, to, 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 to council and then council passes it and then from there in the meantime concurrently yeah. I was running an audit of those buildings I, I set up uh, the, uh, a unit under General Sibia when I took over the city with a level of corruption that I uncovered we set up what is known today in the city of Johannesburg as a forensic and investigation unit you and, need within the, and then within that unit yeah. I then had uh, a unit that to works on, on hijacked uh, buildings. So we started actually daily um, uh, doing audit of this, uh, you know, raiding these buildings, yeah. looking at who is the owner. So you now know what you are offering. Tell yeah, us. No, I, Tell I, us. I, absolutely. We have identified uh, today just over 500 uh, buildings, uh, abandoned, hijacked, uh, derelict. And uh, we, uh, we've already now offered, last uh, November, we offered 13 buildings just to test the market. Hmm. The response was great, but obviously we had to really learn what is it that the, the business community is looking for because the deal we're giving is so fantastic that you don't have to invest uh, in, in buying this property. Sure. We are saying we'll give it to you to, uh, on a long list. Tell us you want a 20-year list, 30-year list, or 100-year list. Sure. What is important for us? Show us the money. Show us your B credentials. Tell us how many jobs you will create. Uh, show us your artisan training uh, the programs. Yeah. Tell us how many units you're going to you build. Tell us what type of rentals you're going to charge because we want the yes, as because we want, we're looking for high high rise buildings. Sure. And we are saying is please, we will want between 20 and 30 percent of those buildings uh, to be allocated to low uh, income earners. Who is you, Mr. Mayor? Define this you that you are saying we are offering you. We is the city of Johannesburg right. because uh, this is a council uh, approved uh, the plan uh, uh, where I, uh, it's a, it's a C, obviously driven uh, by, by, by me but it's, right. uh, it's, a, it's a plan approved by the city council of, of uh, but in uh, terms of uh, the people that you want to come in that you want to take advantage of the the, 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 the properties that you're letting who is you well no well uh, they, this property is it these people who are sitting here yeah well uh, then some of them probably <coughs> sit in this room and some are everywhere you know some in other words, ordinary people ordinary as well people. as established you know, the, businesses. The, what happened uh, post-1994, uh, for some reason, uh, I, I don't know, we had government uh, uh, in a constitutional framework, but uh, there was no effective law enforcement. Sure. So the city, in a city of Johannesburg, that's why it collapsed, because there was a total break, almost total breakdown of the rule of law. Sure. So I had to bring back the rule of law to attract uh, investment back in the city. Some of the buildings today, we can't find the owners. Uh, some of of them, people uh, uh, don't really know how to get home, their, their, build, their properties back. Sure. Up to today, we've already handed back 828 buildings to the rightful owners. We took them back from this uh, the criminal syndicate sure. to give them back. Yeah. And where we cannot find the owners, yeah. uh, we're busy with expropriation measures so that we as a city can take them Absolutely. and offer them to the private sector. I was about to say expropriation without compensation, without but we'll, compensation. Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> we'll reserve that one for explanation later. Um, Paul, Paul, if I can ask you to come in. You have been in the game uh, perhaps a little longer than the mayor has been, and you are listening to him uh, talking about what he is offering. You tell me what is different, and you tell me also if there's a chance here, an opportunity here for private sector players to come in and try and regenerate uh, Johannesburg. Uh, thank you, Godfrey. Well, the essential difference is this um, a mayor has a focus on the inner city, and this is extremely refreshing. Uh, there's no doubt that the city went backwards uh, prior to that. Um, Tuff's been around for 15 years. And one of the things that's incredible about the city, if you go there, is just the energy and the economy. And it really depends what you see. So if you see crime and grime, we can show you more. But if you see people uh, buying and selling and trading, there is that energy. So there's huge demand to live downtown. Um, it's quite price sensitive. There's huge entrepreneurial opportunities if you're in retail, if you're in manufacturing, and, and sort of the broad spectrum of it. So the opportunity for urban regeneration, um, the opportunity for small business and medium-sized business. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to come later on to this concept of massive small, sure. because um, you know the solution for the inner city is part urban management, 
part investment, and on the investment, it's part big player, mm. part smaller player. Right. Tough is a commercial property financing company. We've invested well over three billion rand downtown since 2003. We took the punt um, on the inner city back then, mm. uh, with people like City Prop and, and others who had started moving into the city at that stage, and it was yeah. the sweet spot. Um, but the potential of the inner city is enormous. Um, the potential for an efficient city is enormous. Yeah. But we are not there. Uh, yeah. Joburg's got real, real challenges, real problems, in fact, that we have to address. But it's a step in the right direction, and yeah. investment's going to be one essential component. Yeah. Yeah. And my company stands ready to finance yeah. um, entrepreneurs if if they have a building and they manage to get one of these 82 units. Yeah, but maybe, maybe it's the television aspect that's not making you maybe express yourself as freely as you can. But are you excited? Because I'm, 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 I'm trying to establish here if the mayor is bringing something that makes you think this is a game changer, this is a turning point in terms of turning around Johannesburg. It's or is it not a, as big as that? No, it, it's a big step forward. It's certainly a very important step in the right direction. You know, city has enormous powers to bring buildings that are outside the market into the market. Right. Um, we had a, a, a program in the past that worked quite well. This is an improvement on it. And if we start with these 82, Tuff's done a lot of research into the, all 82 of them. Yeah. We have a number, a lot of information that we are standing ready to finance. Sure. So some of the big ones, some of the vacant land, yeah. you know, a mixture. So, you know, it's, it's about taking the opportunity, the demand for residential uh, accommodation, both on a rental and an ownership basis. Let's make sure we understand that. Yeah. And in terms of property investment, I think you can get these buildings in a way that the capital gain can be great. Yeah. We need to talk a bit to the mayor about this lease. Um, I'm sort of much more a title kind of guy, you know. Um, <laughs> you know we're a mortgage bank, and you, it's hard to mortgage a lease, but we'll get there. Yeah. Um, so that's the one thing, but but there's a huge opportunity sure. for big and small players. Yeah. It's a both-and play, yeah. and we need to make sure that we're bringing everybody um, to the party. Let's talk about uh, that big, small aspect to it, and let's bring in the support conversation into this, because support, of course, is the biggest uh, representative of uh, property owners in South Africa, a trillion rand in properties on biggest rate payers uh, in the country. Um, Neil, um, I heard that actually you are small in inner Johannesburg. <laughs> well, <laughs> definitely to a certain extent. How? Uh, <laughs> well, I guess, you know, if, if, and I worked with the city 25 years ago. Um, so I, I think previous administrations lost the focus. I think they didn't use their leverage in the planning departments to stop the periphery of other urban developments around Johannesburg. So we've created cities surrounding the CBD. Um, we let crime and grime slip in. Sure. And, and I think, as Praveen Gordon said, you know, it's back to basics. If we don't fix up those basic things, um, investors won't come. Mm -hmm. Simple. Right. Um, so that, I could say that was 15 years ago. Yeah. Where we are right now, yeah. most of the CEOs I speak to are taking the money overseas. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, back, mm -hmm. though? Sorry? Are you back in inner Johannesburg? Um, a s very small component, and I see Jeffrey Satinia from City Prop. He's a big investor in inner cities, mm -hmm. but uh, in, a, in a limited amount. What are the issues for your members in terms of uh, trying to access that opportunity that the mayor is talking about, the opportunity that uh, our Paul has been seeing for years? Um, simple things like trying to get a clearance certificate, um, waiting two or three years for a rezoning application to be approved. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you practical examples. I mean, I was with National Treasury last week explaining to them um, about some of the challenges that uh, practical, practically on the ground yeah. that I have to deal with on a daily basis. I'd get calls from banks in America wanting to do a due diligence on a particular member that has raised five billion. Mm. To my excitement, I'm thinking the money's coming to Johannesburg yeah. or Cape Town, and the CEO of the bank, wherever is in New York, says, no, 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 the money's going to Mauritius. Sure. So I said, so where's the five billion going from Mauritius? No, it's going to Kenya and then Ghana. And then I've got the phone, the SPA member up, and say, why is it going to Kenya and Ghana? Yeah. And it's because of those reasons. But I mean, you know, I chatted to the mayor, and we chat regularly that we, we are working with the city, and we want to work with the city to overcome some of these practical right. problems, because I yeah. think we can jointly find those solutions to, to keep the money here. Yeah. Absolutely. So I kept my Maverick for last. 
Wilson, I didn't forget about you. <laughs> Do you see a role for black entrepreneurs, the single guy who can make a decision on the corridor, as the mayor said, in the opportunity that the mayor has outlined here? Thanks. Well, I mean, just firstly for context, um, our members are both property owners as well as professionals and practitioners in this space. So, you know, um, the expectation obviously is that an opportunity like this not only brings with it opportunity for ownership and development, but also a lot of opportunity for downstream value chain, you know, um, opportunity creation or enterprise development. Yeah. And really, you know, that's where we're coming from to say we'd like to, to make sure and to see that within the, the, the good intentions that the mayor has put forward and within this lovely portfolio of 84 properties and the plans that the city has in place, mm. we need to make sure that we put the interests and the needs of the new entrants right. and the smaller players firmly at the heart yeah. of whatever the, the initiatives that have been proposed are. And I say this because, you know, Neil has raised some of the challenges around, the, you know, and the mayor raised them. There are regulatory challenges, huge regulatory hurdles that even your most well-established uh, big player yeah. finds themselves, you know, challenged to deal with yeah. such that they find themselves going offshore. Yeah. What then is to be said of the smaller player? I want you to How think about those specific that? ones so that you mention them to yes. him. But I also wanted to remind you who you're talking to. Correct. You're talking to that guy who did did things on his own and what did not need facilitation and therefore is unlikely to then come in and say hello for you so you can come in and I'll make sure that you are able to get X do I speak well mr. mayor well uh, you know what actually am I am I am I raising exactly as yeah, you would put absolutely. it to her Absolutely. I think you know what really encouraged me and inspired me to really see this great opportunity um, I remember when I was campaigning to, uh, to take over this crazy job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I actually discovered a minefield of opportunity of entrepreneurs, uh, property entrepreneurs in the inner city, working against the tide because government was uh, uh, really working against them. Level of corruption, slow pace of uh, uh, the getting cooperation from government, total breakdown of the rule of law. But entrepreneurs were there despite all these challenges. Uh, that's when, for me, on the 1st of December, I said, uh, once you set up a government that can be responsive to those people, yeah. you can only unleash the potential. So sure. I'm actually advising Neil uh, and, and the big players. It's up to them uh, if they want to lose out. Uh, because <laughs> if, if, if there's time to invest in the city of Johannesburg is now, yeah. I can assure you in two, three years' time, Neil, uh, your guys, uh, unfortunately, your shareholders are going to go hold you accountable because uh, they want return on, on, on the investment. Please, uh, on your support members, uh, that um, your investors want to see a, a, sure. a, a yeah. return on their investment. And, the place to invest yeah. is not in Hungary or Australia. The place to invest is in the inner city. It is in Johannesburg, yeah. Do you see the same way we saw? Because I still wanted you to answer yeah. the issue around being helped or expecting that there might be here a role that government can play in terms of ensuring that as a black business uh, person yourself, you're able to get uh, take advantage of this opportunity. Look, I think the opportunity is well-intentioned. And I think there is opportunity for entrepreneurs to find their, their space and yeah. find their way. Yeah. And, you know, the mayor has, has his favorite his favorite tagline is, show me the money. Yeah. You know, and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and we believe in that. And we, by no means are we saying that a black player or a new entrant yeah. necessarily needs government to hold its hand yeah. through any transaction. There are a number of credible property developers and um, entrepreneurs and practitioners in our space who have... Uh, you know, like the mayor says, managed to forge a way for themselves. Yeah. But we can't deny the fact that they are, like all other players in this space, faced with a number of very real challenges. Yeah. Challenges around the cost of financing and access yeah. thereof. Yeah. Regulatory challenges, zoning, the process of evicting people from yeah. these um, hijacked buildings, the cost and the legal costs thereof. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that becomes a deterrent even for an established player. And I've, I've met with many of them and, and had these discussions with many of them. And I'm saying we need to, I, th I think it's, it's all fine and well for us to be excited. And I, I applaud the mayor and I applaud the city of Joburg for their well intentions. But I'm saying let's not lose sight of the fact that there are very real structural challenges yeah. that 
make it increasingly difficult for a player who's got a minimal balance sheet, yeah. who's got a minimal track record, yeah. a minimal network, right. and uh, you know is trying to forge a way I'll in a very him. trying environment. Yeah, I'm going to ask him to come but in and Godfrey, try and before answer. You, before you move off the sure. topic, you know, you can't be an inner city champion if you don't have your offices downtown. Mm -hmm. Tufts offices are downtown. And we have a regular stream of uh, property entrepreneurs, mostly black, not all black, but mostly black, who come in to our offices looking for finance. They're not looking for a helping hand. Right. They've found their deal. They've got a deed of sale. They've moved beyond a wish to a transaction, yeah. and they're ready to go. The, the structural challenge, of course, is that many of them battle with their deposit, the leverage. And it's an indictment on us as a country that there is no source of empowerment finance for black property entrepreneurs in this country today. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and that's national. And myself and senior staff have walked this country from top to bottom. I, I, yeah. I won't bore you with the people we've been to, but there are lots of extremely competent artisans, property managers, people who live and work downtown. Um, so it's, this is about enablement. And that's what I like about the, the 82 properties and a lot of the other properties that are not included in 82 yeah. is that there's an opportunity, it's there for everybody and the facilitation that you're talking about, I'm not sure where you're going with that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, is there are entrepreneurs ready to take that up. We right. have, um, quite a few entrepreneurs already um, developing packs for the end of Jan. Because remember, it's the end of Jan, eh? Sure. That, that, that these, um, these uh, proposals need to be in. I was actually coming to you with the question of whether the finance is available. And in part, I think you've answered it. You are saying the finance is not there if we are talking about helping everybody who wants to try and get in on this oh, game. The equity. Mm. Well, the equity finance isn't there. Mm. The debt finance, commercial debt, is uh, tough is 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 ready to finance all 82 if necessary. Mm -hmm. um, we're hoping ABSA and Nedbank, being the other two main players um, downtown, are, are going to come to the party. And they, by the way, they are a healthy competition. Do you like competition? Not really, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but they are healthy competition for us. Um, we have a particular market niche. These uh, bigger uh, banks are are certainly starting to focus a lot more on these property opportunities. So the debt's there. Yeah. Uh, the question is, show me your money is, where do you get the equity from? Yeah. Tuff has an Intertugo equity fund, which is a specialized fund to assist PDIs. Um, remember, we have a w range of uh, entrepreneurs. So that's there as well. Sure. And it's focused countrywide because we have a national presence. Yeah. But we, our main um, um, investment is in the city of Joburg and has been since 2003. You want to come in, Mr. Yeah, no, I just wanted to, us, uh, to not really lose focus on uh, uh, from a bigger picture. I think uh, it's actually 84 buildings. Mm. This 84 buildings is just the start. Uh, there's <coughs> a potential of 500 buildings. Mm. So we will will be as a city release 500 buildings that are available that, that are going to be available that are going to be Obviously, available we, uh, we're going to be releasing plus minus 100 every month every year uh, and, uh, so that uh, we do, obviously it, uh, we, we do this in an organized kind of fashion. I'm hoping before the end of the year I might have another 20 buildings that, are, we, that we are in the process of expropriation. Right. But uh, there's a market of 500 buildings, so the potential is huge. Yeah. So this 84 is just really the beginning. Right. So when we think about uh, this, let's look at it as a, uh, a revolutionary. You know, I just spent um, a few days in Europe. Uh, the address they, uh, they had a meeting with the European Commission. I could not believe uh, the interest uh, that's there. They, they think it's a revolutionary because I, I took the prospect from the European Commission. Commission. In fact, uh, uh, they, they they really want to really mobilise uh, the European um, uh, property funds uh, to come and uh, invest in entrepreneurs in South Africa. And what and what I actually they got impressed about it that they recognise the importance of uh, of uh, my strategy in building an inclusive society. Sure. So the black entrepreneurs uh, the, uh, are going to really be looked at very favorably. But it's not up to me as government uh, to put them in touch. My role as government is to create an enabling environment, fair yeah. play, yeah. and let entrepreneurs go out. Unlike the previous government where uh, BE partners were imposed
imposed on uh, on uh, the, on one another. He, in our case, we are saying we want someone with great b b b b yeah. credentials. Yeah. But it's not up to us to decide to who the partners should be. I was actually going to ask the question and ask the question to Vuiswa as well because I know Sapor would be okay in terms of abiding with the regulation. The extent to which the regulation is neutral so that she is able to participate without feeling like she's disadvantaged. And they are able to participate and he's able to participate without feeling that they are disadvantaged. So I wanted you to lay the conditions that you are offering in these particular deals that you are making available to the market. So that's why our first condition in all in our, in our conditions, the first one is uh, show us your B credentials. Okay. That's the first one. I'm, okay. I'm sure if you lo look at our prospectus, uh, we, we want companies with strong B credentials. Uh -huh. so obviously that, that's going to be number one. Number two, to show us, uh, show us the money. Uh, <laughs> we've made it clear as a city, we don't have money to, uh, to convert those buildings in, into affordable accommodation for our people. So don't then ask, uh, ask her to fund you. We don't have the money. Our balance sheet is known. The balance sheet of the national government is, is, is known. So that's why we're saying you as entrepreneurs, go out, fund the money. That's why we make it easy for you. Instead of uh, buying these properties from us, we can save you a lot of money from buying this, it might be 40, 60, 100 million rents building. We give it to you on a long list. Sure. Do your numbers. Get financial people to really let, or work out how long it will take you uh, uh, to, to really be able to see a return on your money, whether it's a 30, 40, 100 year lease. Sure. But, but if you want to buy this property You are from flexible us, on those yeah, leases. If you want to buy, yeah. buy the property from us, that you, you've got a, a good big balance sheet, even better for us then we'll buy more <laughs> properties or invest in infrastructure because as the city is uh, developing, we need uh, bulk infrastructure, right. and I need the money to, for that. So if you, if some of the guys are prepared to buy those buildings from us, please uh, show us the money, buy them from us, and then they can be uh, they can be yours. And sure. what we'll do, we'll use that money to provide bulk infrastructure, right. uh, because uh, the infrastructure of the city of Johannesburg was built uh, what. 70, 80 years ago yeah. for few white uh, the, the people who lived in the inner city. Now yeah. the city, inner city of Johannesburg has got, what, 10 times the number, yeah. but the, 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 our, our infrastructure the, is still the same. So we need, to, as a city, as we as we seeing this massive uh, development, yeah. we need to capacitate our infrastructure. Yeah, I know you're used to talking because you're a politician now, and uh, <laughs> you're going to have to do a lot of talking because I want you to uh, describe the uh, the the, the, you, you're describing the, the opportunity, but I also want you to talk to what you are actually uh, making uh, available in this instance that is going to be appealing to the extent uh, that people are coming. The scale of uh, the, the, the opportunity in terms of uh, its, its, its attractiveness to someone who's sitting with their money and decides I want to go. Paul spoke about uh, the, what did you call it, Paul? Massive small. And Massive you also, small, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we also so we were speaking earlier about uh, urban densification. Mm -hmm. Why would someone want to bring in their money into in a Johannesburg? Give us those needy, needy little things that will attract the money to come in there? I think if you look at um, the big cities uh, all over the world, uh, I can assure you if, if the inner city of Johannesburg was like New York or, or London, personally I would be living uh, in the inner city with, uh, with uh, mm -hmm. a penthouse uh, with uh, just clubs, a restaurant. If it uh, gets to that, will you come and live oh, in the inner clubs, city? Uh, in a, yeah, 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 on, yeah, on record. If, if, if the inner city of Johannesburg was like uh, New York or whatever, yeah. I would be living in the inner city because I, I love jazz, I love uh, uh, going out uh, and be able to walk freely. You know, I, honestly, I would not really be living in a suburb. I would be living in the inner city. I'll because, join you. you know, I'll, I'll join you. Same here. No, absolutely. <laughs> You're making the commitment as well. Definitely. So uh, yeah. it, it's a place that I like to live and not uh, live uh, uh, too far away from opportunities. I, I want to really be able what to... What opportunities, uh, Mr. Mayor, yeah, is I'm, what I'm asking when I'm, you. When I'm a 70-year-old guy, I want uh, to, uh, to not to worry about uh, taking a taxi or drive, but go to a just club of five minutes or walk from a house, go to a theater to, uh, and have a glass of wine. I can walk uh, to my house and I know I'm free. I want to live in a society like that, more especially at old age. Mm. Uh, so I, I'm preparing this actually, uh, I'm preparing this uh, in a city for 
my <laughs> But you know, Godfrey, uh, you must remember Manhattan, New York was similar to Joburg in yeah. the 1970s. Yeah. Bryant Park was called Needle Park. Mm -hmm. You know, there was, for those of my age, there books like Run, Baby, Run, and all those kind of things about describing a dysfunctional city. Look at Manhattan today. And it started with urban management. And I think that's the major challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got to get better at urban management collectively. Mm -hmm. And here I'm talking about city. I'm particularly talking about the unions and particularly SAMU. Yeah. Um, and I'm talking about the private sector and business coalitions. Yes. But having said that, you know, there's so much opportunity in terms of the city is a multi-sector economy. Yeah. The dawn of demolish and new build is breaking. It's breaking in other cities. It's breaking in, in Johannesburg uh, as well. And that's why in these properties, 84, um, there are a number of uh, vacant sites in, in Yeovil. Suddenly, the, the, the thought of a four or five story uh, building, um, these kind of things, uh, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs you've never heard of, um, uh, some of our clients are, are building four or five story walk ups as we speak. Yeah. So there's enormous opportunity. The, the problem, of course, is to get a multi million rand development yeah. like a jewel city yeah. or a or the Samancor building uh, they are going to become fewer and further between and yeah. that's why massive small is important Paul, you know you're sitting next to the man whose members are able to construct that kind of facility that you're talking about so you need to be able to help me convince him and his members such as Growth Point, such as all these other massive companies that are listed on the JSC, to come back and develop the kind of uh, properties While and they're making their mind up, about. we've got lots of entrepreneurs who will start the process. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the important part is it's both and. We need mm -hmm. everybody in there, but we need urban management to be s solved. Um, it, there, there are real issues there. Um, and, and this is a process that needs to unfold in a very short time frame, maybe three or five years, that you're getting to uh, um, you get into that, yeah. uh, unleashing the opportunity. But, you know, tough funds, you want nitty gritty. The deals that we finance, and we're probably going to do 800 million rand of disbursements this year as a company, we're sure. financing between 13 and 15% uh, initial yield. Now, that's an enormous uptick in terms of if you want an investment case. If you can get yeah. an initial yield, say, between 12 um, 13, 13 and a half, 14. Yeah. This is an investment case. Absolutely. Um, you've just got to get your product right because yeah. you need people to move in. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned that 13 to 14% yield. I had an interview with the CEO of Redefine the other day, and we were talking figures around 5 6%. Six percent. Mm. That's what they are reporting on the JSC. That's what, they, that's what uh, guys are getting here in Simpton mm. and, and, uh, and other developed uh, areas. Yeah. So if, I mean, you can get this type of returns in the city of Joburg. So, Neil. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's where we are <laughs> all <laughs> headed. Yes, no, I, I just want to correct. <laughs> what will it take a growth point to come and give us the massive development that we we have that, that, that we can be part of and 10 in a Johannesburg into Manhattan. Maybe we give it another name. I don't know. I think I, I just want to rewind back on the whole New York thing. You know, it's, yes. it, it, and sure, in the 70s it was bad. I, I was fortunate to have a, a few conversations with uh, Mayor Rudy Giuliani. And um, you've got to have big balls. Excuse the language, but <laughs> no, you do. You, oh, well, it's not I'm starting out. with urban <laughs> That, that, that comes naturally. It's, you're going to make some very tough decisions. You're going to lose a few votes. You're going to have to put people in jail for breaking the law. And you're going to have to sort out the basics. If you do not sort out the basics, you're not mm -hmm. going to, no matter even if you're getting 12%, mm -hmm. you're not going to get anybody there. If it's not safe, if it's not clean, um, forget it. It's, it's not just going to happen overnight. So, Mr. Mayor, some unpopular decisions. You, 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 you're going to well, have to, you, and you're taking them. I'm so, sure, you know, I'm hats sure off to you. I'm sure you're aware. Uh, yesterday, for the first time in my life, at the age of 59, I've made the first, first arrest. Uh, citizen arrest. Well, well, well done on that. Throw the keys away. Put them in jail and throw the what keys away. <laughs> what did you Did you wrestle someone I down? I arrested someone in town. I was uh, we, uh, passing Rugby by, and, uh, and I see a guy 
pipe um, in a trolley uh, driving meat around uh, the city of Joburg. I said, this can't be. We had to, I had to get my drivers to turn back and arrested the guy called uh, the JMPD and our health inspectors. And um, the guy, is, I think it must be in jail. As well. <laughs> <laughs> you know? These are things that okay. are totally unacceptable because uh, it, uh, you can imagine the health hazard. I yeah. mean, uh, yeah. something like this yeah. can cause massive challenges. Yeah. Our health facilities are under tremendous pressure. I'm going to any of our clinics or our hospital, and you look at the type of diseases uh, that are facing our doctors. Now, do we allow things like this to really happen under our watch? Not yep. uh, if, if people are not happy with Not me, under my watch, you are saying. Not, not under our watch. If people feel they don't want me, uh, they want chaos, then vote me out. I'm happy. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, the, I think this, the, the solutions are quite simple. And if you really want the answers, then, I mean, I don't have kids, but find out from your kids where do they want to live yeah. and why do they want to live there. Is it Sydney? Is it London? Is it New York? Yeah. And I think the answers are going to be very practical and simple. They want yeah. a clean place. They want a safe place. They want yeah. a place that attracts them innovation. They want to be able to go to uh, the arts and yeah. culture yeah. And, and museums. So those are the, those are the answers. And, uh, and I think we have to have some mechanisms to resolve those type of things. Absolutely. I have to say I agree with the mayor because it reminds me of my experience years ago, I think about five years ago, in an African city. I won't mention the name. And I went to market and uh, I saw this guy, as the mayor says, paddling meat, carrying it on top of his head. And I was absolutely, absolutely scandalized. I didn't want to eat meat for a while. And I'm a cannibal, by the way. <laughs> Let's uh, open up the discussion to the floor. If you have a question that you'd like to pose to our panel, uh, can I ask that you identify yourself and also try to make the question question as short and pithy as possible, and then we get the answers uh, from our, uh, our participants here. There should be a roving microphone somewhere. Is it alive? Yes, it is. Uh, so if uh, there are any people who would like to participate in the debate, please do. I have uh, still many questions here uh, that I can ask, but I'd like to open up and uh, diversify the debate. There's a hand here. Sir, thank you. Hi, Mr. Mayor. My name is Alfonso Buerta. I, by the way, live in the city in one of those penthouses. Oh, well done to you. <laughs> well you. done to you. You've done better than the mayor. <laughs> but I'm a very big fan of what you are trying to achieve. I understand the difficulties. I think the main question, as an investor and somebody that's committed to the city, is back to human capital at the city council planning and those people that actually need to get the rezoning. I'm looking at the project, I look at the rezoning and the period is going to take and I'm saying, well, it's probably going to be too long to really commit to it. Sure. So that's really the type of things that we need to do. Human capital, instead of being detailed, but I mean, it's, it's tough and the spirit of, you know, of, of, of the city in itself. Mm. Because I think the city has lost its soul and that's what you actually need to get back that everybody put together and get it back to where it should be. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Let's take a couple more questions before we ask him to respond. There was a hand at the back. Okay. Uh, let's get the microphone. Yeah, you have a microphone. Yeah. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, this one's also for the mayor, Alexander from Africa Business News. Uh, my question is, uh, you know, no building is an island. So what are the city's plans in terms of rejuvenating and taking care of all that happens outside of the doors of that building, be it waste management, crime, I mean, all the sort of usual things and some of the things that were pointed out in terms of the challenges that the city faces. What are, what are those plans in terms of the city to, to clean up and to, to fix up all that happens outside of those buildings? Thank you, sir. Uh, there was a hand there. Right there. Yeah. Oh, you have a microphone, please. Go ahead. Um, good morning. My name is Pamela Limant. I'm the CEO of Enigma Lifestyle Hotel Apartments. Um, Mayor, I think what you're doing in the city centre is quite, um, it's amazing. And I think you do get a lot of support. And I think um, I'm with Neil on the, on the crime issue that's come up a couple of times. And I think if the crime is cleared up, there's a lot of investors that actually do have money to invest um, into the city centre. But the question is, what are we doing about the crime? And who is resolving the crime? Is there any plan of action to stop the crime? 
Thank you. I think uh, they are all firing at you. Please feel free to come in if you have any point that you want to raise let, in terms of support. Let me start yeah. uh, with the question of crime because it's a, a matter that's really close to my heart. Uh, that's when uh, uh, six months uh, after taking over office, the first biggest investment I made was on capacitation of JMPD with the employment of 1,500 police officers who are undergoing training. They'll be ready for deployment by July next year. Because I realized, I mean, how do you serve as a, so a city of over 5 million people with uh, half the number of uh, police men and women that we needed? So we've got 1,500 police officers who are undergoing thorough training. They'll be ready to be deployed on our streets. So next year, this time, the JMPD force uh, will be double the number of uh, what it is currently. I think without any doubt, uh, our new chief of police, because uh, the, the, the previous uh, chief of police, I don't know how uh, they got the job in the first place, but you look at uh, Chief Timber, I mean, it's an un unbelievable human being. This Friday, uh, for the media, uh, you are aware, I release um, monthly states of crime, of crime in, in the city of Johannesburg to show you uh, the arrest, uh, the type of crimes, uh, the trends, and, and so forth. One challenge I'm sitting with, and I raised this yesterday in one of the platforms, and I'll, I'll keep on raising on Friday, take it to another level. The city of Johannesburg, in terms of our constitutional framework, JMPD, we can arrest, then we give you two stops or mm. walks and the NPA. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, I don't know when is uh, this uh, criminal just, uh, justice system going to be uncap uh, uh, uncaptured. Unfortunately, our criminal justice system is still captured. I uh, can imagine if uh, us as the city of Johannesburg actually suffers, where people steal money left, right, and center with overwhelming evidence, cases are thrown out uh, 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 because uh, uh, our criminal justice system is not prepared to do their work. Uh, our courts, fortunately enough, are still intact. But when it comes to subs uh, and, and uh, walks and, and the NPA, unfortunately, uh, we've got a huge challenge. And mm -hmm. I think uh, I've really challenged the president of the country, uh, I've written to, uh, to him, I've written uh, to the minister of police and justice through the, uh, the, uh, the provin provincial director, I've engaged the, the walks. There is total reluctance uh, to prosecute. Uh, the, the guy will be arrested is the guy arrested yesterday. But the real criminals in this country, unfortunately, people who have looted this country, unfortunately, are still walking, uh, are still uh, free. But uh, we are doing everything possible as a city. I'm not going to sit back. That's why the release of the states on a monthly basis is going to give you a sense that I'm serious about crime. Okay. And I'm not going to really be playing games or give you numbers uh, that are massaged. I'm going to give you real states on a Every, every day, every month. This Friday, actually, it's uh, the one coming. Okay. We're busy capacitating our, our our municipal courts. But then, yes, I'll have municipal courts, but I don't have prisons. I like to have <laughs> prisons. Uh, the city of Johannesburg, uh, at our size, uh, the, the, the number of people in, in any major cities anywhere in the world, we've got our own prisons. So we need uh, to, to change the constitution. Uh, uh, I'm happy the city of Johannesburg can be used as a test. I can tell you I'll raise money quickly to build uh, prisons, and I can tell you that a lot of those prisons will be full uh, within the first month. <laughs> <laughs> we take prison, yeah, we, we can't live with, uh, with, uh, with uh, the criminals. You okay. raise the issue around uh, the, the fast tracking of uh, the, the applications. Also with our adjustment budget, when I announced uh, the deployment of, uh, the recruitment of uh, police officers, immediately put in 23 million rents uh, to development planning uh, to recruit additional uh, inspectors in, in development planning so that we can fast track uh, up, uh, the application. I've got a new ED in that, in, in that department doing a fantastic ED, job. ED, Mr. Uh, Mayor? Uh, ED, uh, executive Inter Director of uh, Development oh. Planning. Okay. So it's, it's not something that you can change the mindset because unfortunately over the many years the previous government has actually created this perception in the public public service that they were doing people a favor. 
and the corruption was a huge challenge that everything that uh, they, they, they needed to do for you they wanted you to pay sure. so you're dealing with with uh, with uh, crime it, i mean with uh, the, not just with ordinary crime it's yeah. also dealing with uh, with with corruption Talk about uh, other buildings around. That's why sure. we prefer prison type of uh, buildings. That's yeah. why we raid in these buildings because I cannot afford to have a situation where someone invests uh, three, four hundred million rands in a property and then the property next door is hijacked. Mm -hmm. We cannot afford to really mm -hmm. have that situation. Mm -hmm. So we need prison type the, uh, the, the, uh, of development. Sure. So if, if uh, uh, someone builds and uh, uh, invests in a property and there's a hijacked property yeah. and next door, I can tell you personally, I make sure that we make life hell for, the, for, the, for the criminal syndicates. Uh, they've got to get out. We take this building offer it to the, to the next guy so that uh, we can have precinct by precinct development. Personally, personally. You want to come in, Vuyuswa, and you want to come in, uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to, um, cause, because a, a number of issues were raised. And Quickly, if you can, yeah. Okay. I want to try and get as many questions. All right. Now, I think the, the issue of uh, gentrification is one that also comes up ah. quite a lot when ah. we discuss these topics. And of course, you know, <clears throat> we recognize that it's important for us to attract investment and yeah. build penthouses, etc. But it's also very important that, you know, in rebuilding this new Johannesburg that we'd like to live in and we'd all like to enjoy, we need to make sure that it is an inclusive type of development. Sure. Um, and I, I, I remembered one of the mayor's previous engagements. He spoke of rentals of, uh, well, I don't know, 800, uh, 1,500 a month, and I'm not sure how viable <laughs> well, those may uh, be. Well, but uh, um, Come and talk to us. We are saying, we're not saying the entire building. Sure. We're saying 20 to 30%, please uh, put it towards uh, uh, local, local income. Low cost and, uh, income. Come and talk to us in terms of incentives. No, absolutely. Yeah, we are happy to talk to you, to assist you, to really get to your numbers. Okay. Okay, you made your point? No, I just wanted to stress the fact that Absolutely. we also need to make sure that that's at the heart of it. But we I want also to live in, a, in an inclusive, you know, spatially integrated society. And as yeah. we build these beautiful high-rise buildings, let's not, you know, throw mm. people out like trash. Absolutely, 100%. I also know that you didn't make the commitment to move back to the city, the inner I've, city. I've lived there, actually. <laughs> I used to own a business there. I used to live there. Okay. Uh, and I look forward to living there again. You're a part of the trek to yeah. the north. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to pick up on those two issues of reason. Yes, quickly. Um, you know, one of my member CEOs said he lost 100 million in six months because of a delay in a zoning application. Jeez. It would have been worth his while to rather give the city the 100 million cash, which he's still prepared to do. When was this? A um, couple of months ago. Well, it's, it's still not approved. Mm. Um, and for the city to utilize that cash to develop an online um, planning application process. So, so, so that's the first thing. The money is there and we want to assist. Um, Kenya didn't have a planning process in place. They came to visit the city of Joburg a couple of years ago. Within 36 months, they went online. So they ahead of Johannesburg. And um, I've chatted to National Treasury and Kochta. Uh -huh. um, hopefully, I put a delegation together, maybe with the mayor. Let's go and visit Kenya and see yeah. how they managed to get this online system. Sure. Um, the second issue about crime. Um, I, I recall the CEO of FNB called me a couple of years ago to say they've got 14,000 people that come in and go out of Bank City. And a, a, a lot of them, as soon as they get out of the parking lot, their windows are broken. Um, and we sat with Parkstar, we facilitated a meeting. I don't know where that's gone, but I think if we keep on leaving this matter up to government and the public sector, it's also unfair. The it's not always responsibility of, of, uh, of the government to resolve public yeah. safety. Yeah. We have to work together. Yeah. Um, and you know, for, for Bank City, it was, it was maybe a simple thing of getting more involved in the Central Improvement District sure. with other property owners across the road. Yeah. And you yourself monitor that. Absolutely. Mr. Mayor, the proposal for an online uh, portal? Well, uh, uh, the, the city manager is here. We're working around the clock. Uh, look, I, unfortunately, we don't have the time, but I, it, and it's not a horror movie. You know, When I took over the city of Johannesburg, our IT department, I mean, we the biggest metro financially and otherwise. IT department was uh, run by someone with HR. 
Mm. It, it was put in HR department. And unfortunately with government, uh, for me to take this uh, the IT to really be a standalone uh, unit took me a year because uh, you've yeah. got to prepare a report, take it to council, then start the recruitment process of uh, executive director. We just got someone, several started, what, three months, three, four months ago. We've got really one of the top IT guys. Sure. It is now a unit on its, its, on its own. Okay. Uh, so absolutely. We, 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 we are on the right track. It's just that, unfortunately, as I said, I don't run a, a shampoo business yeah. uh, <laughs> where, where I can make decisions in the corner, I mean, yeah. in the passage. So this process, unfortunately, will come and takes time. And then over and above yeah. all these challenges, yeah. uh, I have people working inside with outside forces to destabilize us. Uh, you know? yeah. So it, these are forces that uh, we've got to deal with. But I think uh, with the CM, uh, the, the CM office is now capacitated we've got we've just employed uh, two additional senior people uh, the one started last week uh, the, the CEO started uh, two months ago yeah. we are capacitating with new blood and new thinking sure. people want to work for public service okay let's take some more questions there's a hand there yes please go for it okay and let's see this is directed to the mayor morning mayor uh, my name is Nkuli Bukhopa. I'm the president of the SA Institute of Black Policy Practitioners. Mayor, thank you for indulging us again and for the great initiatives. Big concern, and I'm echoing what the CEO has already said around post-eviction plans. Is there any coordinated effort between your office as well as the Department of Human Settlements so that the developers can find a seamless process through which to deal with these evictions? The second question is, are you talking um, with broadband uh, companies so that they can be you know, broadband for the city to actually make the developments more viable and the city more viable. Thank you. Let's take a couple more. There's a hand here and there's a hand there. Go for it. Um, this is to all the panel members. I think the question is, um, what is the, oh sorry, my name is Lebo. I'm from the University of Johannesburg. Um, it, this speaks to the social integrated plan of the city to say, Yes, we want investment in terms of accommodation, but what other areas are we focusing on? Because you find that people live and work far from work. So in terms of transportation, in terms of their kids, ECD centers, in terms of the schools, and some of the schools are not even regulated. You yeah. have schools that are operating in the city that are not even uh, supposed to be running. Yeah. And then the other thing is in terms of wellness. Um, parks for kids. Those are the things that yep. we're looking at it, for making it attractive for young people to want to live in the city. Sure. You need to make it attractive beyond just accommodation because people want to live, work and play. Mm. Thank you. So those, that's Thank you very much. I like it that you're thinking ECD in your early age. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of the things you've been talking about time of making decisions, we, one of the things is that uh, when you put out these buildings to tender or to contract, uh, people, when they pay, they rely, to, for their funding, they rely on you making decisions at a particular time. When you promise to make a decision at a particular time, you do that. And I'm one of the people that have been, we've been waiting for 18 months for a process that closed last year. And we still, we're in the process, we, as especially as young black uh, entrepreneur, we suffer because you secure funding, you lose funding whilst you're waiting for government, and then you secure again. And sure. people, people have to trust us to say, okay, we, we bid, put a bid, no. want you to be able to support us. No. And then when it takes uh, <laughs> such a long time, and there's no transparency, you go yep. and ask what, where is it, this process? Nobody yep. knows, nobody sure. will tell you. So can you be able to talk about sure. that process, whether you put uh, some sort of transparency, maybe online, sure. and also be open about your Sure. So many problems, so little time, Mr. Mayor. Let, let me actually start uh, with, uh, I, I missed the name, a very, very important uh, Mpo. Musima. 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 You know, the, the issue that you've raised, uh, I raised it earlier on before this meeting with the city manager that I'm going to hold him accountable because, <laughs> unfortunately, the, the system in this country in terms of procurement 
I give political direction, and the city manager is the one uh, to take care of the administration. And I was telling him about my frustration. I said, to CM, tell me, are these delays? Are these delays because of the capacity? Is it because of sabotage? Or is it because people are too scared to make decisions? And I said, this is unacceptable because I've been promised uh, the last uh, three months that uh, three of the buildings, uh, they are ready to be awarded. But every time I've got to be asking, uh, because uh, I said to them, uh, I don't want to be on the first page of the newspapers that uh, uh, the mayor is interfering in procurement. I'm sure you, you read about all these matters every day. Mm -hmm. you know. So CM, uh, I said to, actually I promised him, I said I'm going to, I hope someone can ask uh, this question. So I'm sure someone <laughs> so thank you for, Is it a planted question? Thank you, thank you for, no, thank you for raising this matter it's a, it's a it's a matter of uh, grave concern sure. to, to to me and the law prevents me from uh, um getting people to make a decision. Yeah. So, and as I say, I'm not really sure is that people are sabotaging me because I've uh, encountered many cases yeah. mm -hmm. of people actually deliberately, mm -hmm. deliberately misleading, deliberately making sure that uh, they award tenders wrongly and, and so forth. Even sure. where there's no corruption, they just really make sure that this, this tender is, does not comply and obviously work with outside forces and sure. so forth. That's why the city manager has to help uh, in protecting me and uh, to do his work. Sure. That's why I'm happy with this uh, capaci capacitation. Yeah. And the issue around uh, inclusive uh, the, uh, uh, city, I'm really, that is what I've always emphasized. I want a city where people can work, live and play. Mm. That's why I've given uh, an example. I'm 59. I want, by the time I'm 70 or so, I want to go and live in that city. I can go to the park, go and read a paper. Yeah. Then in the evening, go to uh, go and have dinner. After dinner, go to a, to a just lap or go to a show. I was actually going and, to say, uh, Mr. And, Mayor. And I, and I can take my, uh, go and pick up my, uh, my kids from a yeah. CD center from school. I want I live in a city in like that, 70. and that's a, and that's a <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> <laughs> grandkids, grandkids. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there's, a, there's a city we want. There's a city we want to build. We want to build. We want. We don't want a city of just uh, people living there. Uh, no, it must be a place where people live, work, and play. Sure. And uh, there are. On the 19th, Wednesday 19th, I think on Monday, yeah. I'm doing a sort of with uh, the Jewel City sure. diversity, the first biggest, single biggest, uh, invest two billion rands of development, uh, you know. It's got everything in, in, in there, and they'll be putting another two billion rents. I'm so, going to hurry along, so Mr. Mayor. Uh, it, it, it is happening. Um, you haven't spoken to the issue around broadband and also the actions post evictions. If you can quickly address those two, please. Well, uh, we, we've made a commitment uh, to, to all the to people interested in this building, because some of these buildings are hijacked. As a city, we are saying, please don't evict uh, people now. Let's evict them few weeks before you start the construction because it's no point uh, we evict people and then leave them out in the streets. So work with us as a city to do your rezoning, your, uh, your building plans, approvals, and uh, a week or so before you start building, us as a city of Johannesburg will take the responsibility okay. to find alternative accommodation for this, uh, the people because the, some of them will actually get employment opportunities. Obviously, one big issue or challenge we're sitting with in the city of Johannesburg is undocumented uh, uh, the foreign nationals. It's a huge challenge. We're getting uh, Home Affairs to work with us because at the end of the day, we, we can provide accommodation, but uh, there's no way anyone in the world can expect me to, appro to provide accommodation to people who I don't know who they are. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in thanking the mayor as well as my panel for uh, our discussion today. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, thank you as well for listening in on our debate today. I think uh, what we heard is the scale of the challenge, but I think I'd like to look on the other side and say the scale of uh, the opportunity that we're talking about. 300,000 people on a housing list, and we're also talking about 88 companies that have properties that are already available. So I don't know what you're waiting for. Thank you for watching today. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you.